Well, hello there, my lovely, beautiful internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. Real quick before we get started, this video is actually restricted to only attractive, sexy people who are trying their best. So if you're seeing this, you made it in. Good job. Was that necessary? <laughs> but I want the pillow on the couch. It has been a minute since I actually filmed a YouTube video because late January of 2024, I was preparing for a jiu-jitsu tournament, had a freak accident, had a vertebral artery dissection, doesn't that sound fancy, and I had a stroke to the back of my brain. Made a couple of videos about it if you're interested, but I wanted to share what life has looked like since that occurred because there have been some very unexpected changes and I've hesitated to make this video because I don't want to be one of those people who is like, I had a near death experience and now I have a rejuvenated sense of life. But oh God, um, I am one of those people. I think I'm going to title this video, having a stroke fix my brain and understand that that is a little bit of an exaggeration. But though I have holes in my brain and my body is not doing the best, something really shifted in me in a very beneficial way. I do want to clarify, I'm not sitting here like I'm glad this stroke happened. My personal theory of life is to not give power to things that don't deserve it. So often we hear people being like, I'm so glad X terrible thing occurred because it made me into the person I am today. My opinion on that, this might be semantics, is that we're not really giving ourselves enough credit when we say that. Bad things happen and then we get to make choices with what we want to do in the aftermath. And this situation certainly presented me with some opportunities to look at life differently. And I have, and it's been really cool. Do you have to chew on that right there? Guys, I'm sorry, this is the time I have to film a video today. So we're just gonna have to deal with the crunching. When I reference almost dying, I don't actually mean the day that I had the stroke or the week and a half in the ICU hospital after. I mean specifically a day in early May when at about midnight, I started losing control of my body again in the same way that occurred when I had the stroke. In incredible dizziness, inability to use my hands, speech wasn't working, my tongue felt super weird, and it started happening really fast. And the injury that caused the kind of stroke that I had, I knew there is a risk of another stroke occurring, which is pretty terrifying to me. It very much felt exactly like it was happening again. I had enough presence of mind to call 911 and that was about it. By the time paramedics got here, I couldn't really speak. Getting to the hospital, I lost the ability to like move half of my body and a little bit more. Pretty much immediately after doing a CT, they put me on this crazy blood thinner that you can't sit up out of bed unsupervised because it makes your blood so thin. And so I was hospitalized. Turns out it was a hemiplegic migraine, which kind of masquerades as a stroke. Very lame of it, I might say. But there was one particular moment where I remember I was being wheeled into the CT scan. Couldn't control my body, couldn't really form words. And I felt myself fading away. I very much had an extended moment of being completely alone in my own head and thinking, okay, this is it. I do think another stroke is happening. I was told if that occurred, I probably wouldn't make it. And even if I don't die, like this is it. I'm just gonna see hospital rooms the rest of my life. And I'm curious if anybody else who has had, oh my God, I'm actually dying, like that kind of a moment, but it felt so very boring and quiet. I kind of always thought in my head there'd be like a life flashing before my eyes moment or like major regrets or realizations. And it was just sort of like quiet, boring acceptance and a lot of sadness for the people I would leave behind. Also side note, I saw my dogs, like the ones who have passed away. I saw them <laughs> like waiting for me. Our brains do crazy things, right? But I wasn't dying and I made it. And since that moment, there has been such a massive perspective shift in my life. The biggest thing that came out of that for me that has unfolded over the course of months is that I actually wanna be alive. I think that sentence is a pretty common thing for most people to say. Survival instinct, it's pretty ingrained in us humans, but the age of 20 onward, I certainly was alive and lived life, but really didn't wanna be a part of it. I spent every day, that's really not an exaggeration, for over a decade, mostly trying to distract myself from wanting to not be here anymore, wanting to distract myself from self-harmful thoughts or suicidal thoughts. And that like, that was life to me. Life to me was like, survival was trying to like get past the darkness enough to function. And I had good days and bad days, good years, bad years. But in the extent of my adult experience, that has always been an underlying consistent for me. I'm not sure if it was like the almost dying thing or years of therapy that led up to it, or maybe all of the above. I'm talking about emotional things, Sophie. How dare you search for Leo's toy? She found it. Like pretty immediately there was this shift in my brain that occurred. I think part of it was being like, oh, I am going to die, right? Like that is a guarantee. It didn't happen that day, but it will occur. And I don't know if I have 24 hours left, 
or 24 years. None of us do, right? But it became tangible to me. Damn, there's a lot of freedom in that realization. Part of it was like, yeah, you'll get your wish eventually. Like in that, that dark frame of mind where I really don't wanna be here. Like that's gonna occur anyways. But in the meantime, I get to do whatever I want with the time that I have. And the idea of like embracing joy when it's there and also embracing the really shitty things in life because they are a reality too, I've suddenly been able to do. I've gotten very involved in going to see live music. I've never been a music person. I'm not a musician. I like music, right? I made a short video about this, but a lot of the triggers for a lot of the stroke deficits are lights, sounds, flashing lights, people, loud environments, all of that. So I started going to concerts locally here in Denver. There's like concerts constantly. Many of them are super cheap, some of them are free. I did this as a way to, to kind of exposure therapy my brain to deal with the symptoms to hopefully overload it enough that it would start creating new neural connections and heal and it's actually worked. And I've had so many moments of like standing there in the crowd with new friends or old friends or just by myself and basking in how incredible it is to be alive. I wish I was better with words so I could accurately convey what a difference in perspective this has been for me. I don't even remember feeling like happy or joyful to be here when I was a kid. People will talk about like, think back to when you were little and the joy and like what you wanted to be. And I don't have those memories. I didn't have like a super dark, horrible childhood or anything like that, but there was always a heaviness that has followed me as long as I can remember and that got worse as I experienced actual trauma and mental illness and things like that. And life has not gotten easier. In fact, it has gotten more challenging, but I am okay. And even when I am like desperately not okay, I'm still okay. So many of the mental restrictions that held me back from both enjoying pieces of life and fully embracing that moment. And also maybe more importantly, in really feeling the depths of grief and anger and rage and sadness. I'm like, okay, bring it on. Not trying to hold everything at bay all of the time. Not trying to like button myself up and hold myself together and do the right thing and follow all the shoulds in my brain. Brain, like they've just, to a large extent, dissolved. I feel so much more comfortable with myself. And I always used to have this line on repeat in my brain that went something like, none of this matters. None of this fucking matters. And I still have that same line on repeat in my brain, except the tone has changed. And now it's none of this matters. Like none of this fucking matters. Incredible. That means I get to make it whatever I want it to be and love the people around me and build a life that I want to be a part of and not care that much about what other people might think or say or what I might think or say. Like to actually invest in myself. And I am fully aware of the fact that I am nine months out for the stroke and like six months out from this realization. And I'm probably still riding a high of being able to do life. I'm not gonna lie, it is still incredibly difficult, especially trying to return to work. I feel very dumb a lot of the time because my brain does not work the way that it did before. It's like, I'll know what I wanna say, but I can't form words or I get completely lost in conversation or I'm conversing with very smart, intelligent, successful people and I feel so behind. There have been a lot of tears and a lot of sobbing or yelling in my car. By the way, huge recommend. Scream it out in your car where no one can hear you. Ah, chef's kiss, great. It's also made me a lot less tolerant of things that I don't want to deal with or treatment that I don't believe that I deserve. I now say that because I'm like, damn dude, we're all gonna disappear. We're all gonna fade into history and memory within a handful of a dozen years. So why would I stay in situations that I know are damaging or not good for me? I'm not interested in doing that anymore. I mean, this really just feels like a very self-indulgent video where I'm like, ah, my perspective has changed. But specifically, if you have been a part of this community for any length of time, I was watching back old videos last night when I couldn't sleep that I had made years ago. And I can watch them and remember what I felt like in those moments and the heaviness and the depression and the darkness and the hopelessness and the hope, right? And the I'm gonna keep going, the, the trying to be resilient, doing my best. And I now look back on those versions of myself with love and compassion instead of judgment. And it felt important to me to share this piece of my mental journey because there are those of you who have been so incredibly kind to care to listen over the years. And I have shared when I am desperately not okay. And I wanted to also share when I really am. Like I said, things are pretty challenging. A lot of things are in flux. I deal with a lot of physical stuff that is very difficult and I am still trying to figure out how the hell to do that. Haven't figured it out, probably never will. We're all doing our best. The struggle bus, beep beep, is real. But so is like so much joy. 
love, and a lot of freedom. And with that, I'm about to leave you because I can feel my brain stuff starting to act up because now everything gets kind of wavy and I can't really see straight. And that's like a good indication that my words are gonna stop working pretty soon. So I'm gonna lay down. But I would like to make weekly videos until the end of the year, as my body allows. And I have some ideas, but if there's anything you guys would like to see or hear about in particular, let me know in the comments down below because gosh darn it, I'm very grateful to this community, to you guys. There is anything you would like to see or hear me share, I would love to do that. You have done so much for me. Truly, the amount of support that I received from this community in this healing journey could not have done it without you. Continually, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let me see if I can remember the outro that I've used for like six years. To you watching this video right now, thank you so much for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me and the loud puppies today. You could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else, but you chose to hang out with us for a few minutes. And I really appreciate that. I love you guys, I'm thinking about you. And I will see you in the next video. Ah, bye guys. Thank you for listening.